What's up everyone, today I'm bringing you Streets of Rage 4, which is published by .mu and released on April 13th, 2012 for the PlayStation, Steam, Switch and Xbox One. For those of you who don't know, Streets of Rage, also known as Bare Knuckle in Japan, was a very popular beat-em-up series that saw its first release, Streets of Rage 1, in 1991 and its last, Streets of Rage 3, in 1994. The series had it all. Good music, solid gameplay and charismatic characters, so it was only natural that people would be left wanting for more. However, it would only be 14 years later that the franchise would officially resurface by the hands of .mu, Lizard Cube and Guard Crush Games, with the game being publicly announced in August 2018. As much as fans got excited to finally see a new Streets of Rage game being developed, doubts inevitably arose. Would the game be true to its roots? Would it be as fun and solid as its predecessors or just some quick cash grab? Well, let's find out. The story. Streets of Rage 4 takes place 10 years after the events of Streets of Rage 3, where the King of Crime, Mr. X, had his ass handed to him again by Axel and his friends. In the game's present day, Wood Oak City has been taken over by new lords of crime called the White Twins and yes, you guessed it, they're Mr. X's kids. As you progress through the game, you find out that the White Twins, and I'm not making this up, want to seize control over everyone's minds using bad dubstep music. And who's going after them? An older Kurt Cobain? An 80s rocker chick? A younger chick who's probably into punk music, her badass father who probably listens to some mean R&B music, and a giant man that most likely listens to Black Label Society. So yeah, the white brats managed to piss off the worst type of people they could possibly find. People with good taste in music. Now, before we move on, I ask you to remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of good stuff on the way, and your support helps a lot. And if you enjoy my content and want to help me make more videos like this, consider checking out my Patreon page. I'll leave the links in the description. The main characters. You start with four characters to choose from. Axel, Blaze, Cherry and Floyd, with Adam, the badass cop, being unlocked just after a few missions into the game. He comes in to show people how it's done, okay? Seriously, he's like a Muhammad Ali reborn that decided to start also kicking people. For fun, they all play very differently from each other. Axel is a very straightforward character with a good balance between offense and defense. You don't need much to perform well with him, so if you're absolutely new to the genre, he's pretty good for you to get a general feel of the game. His powerful air special covers a lot of ground and is perfect for steamrolling through mobs. His grand upper can be chained into his pommel special move, and his star move is pretty much like Ken's Shin Ryuken. It sends enemies flying and allows for more air juggling madness. Blaze, my personal favorite, leans heavily into combos and mix up games using bounces, specials, and cancels. For example, you can follow up her double tap attack with a flying kick, cancel it into two air specials, land, do another double tap attack, another flying kick, and cancel it into two more air specials. Trust me, remember this sequence, you'll be doing this a lot. She's a bit more difficult to master than Axel, but trust me, if you put in the effort and learn a few more refined combos, you'll be demolishing thugs like there's no tomorrow. Cherry is the speed demon of the cast, and also the only character from Streets of Rage 4's lineup that's able to run. Her damage output is a little lower than the rest of the other characters, but she more than makes up for this with a variety of moves. Her dash attack is almost god tier, her kick bounce will get you out of sticky situations and can be followed up with a diving punch, she can use her aerial special attack pretty swiftly in the middle of a combo, and her star move covers a big portion of the screen. She's definitely a very fun character to master. Floyd is the walking tank. I already told you Blaze is my favorite, but Floyd comes in very close. He might be the slowest of the bunch, but his skills and strength more than make up for this. His double tap forward attack is a beast for crowd control and overall damage, his grab animation allows you to perform double smashes by grabbing two enemies in tandem, and you can even use the Soria's Obesis projectiles. It's fun. Try grabbing a thug, then go for a jump throw and immediately tap the special attack button. That's a pretty quick and efficient combo finisher. And also, his star move has him going full Iron Man, with a gigantic cannon that has the longest reach out of all star moves. And lastly, Adam, another favorite of mine. Now, think of him as a mix between Axel and Cherry, 
His fast, powerful launches enemies on the third standing hit of a normal combo and has massive combos to deal using wall bounce. A quick example of a combo would be attack twice, grab, attack three times, standing jump kick and then an air special. This is just a very quick combination, there are many more to be done. Unlockable characters. Now here's a nice touch. Whenever you reach certain thresholds in your overall score, you begin unlocking characters from all three previous games. I won't go into much detail about each unlockable character, but here's a quick rundown. Streets of Rage 1 characters are basically powerhouses, high damage output and high defense. If you're having trouble on the stage, try playing as Axel from Streets of Rage 1. You're gonna tear through health bars like your drunk uncle tears through booze at birthday parties. And you know what I'm talking about. Streets of Rage 2 characters are a bit of a middle ground between 1 and 3, and are more akin to Streets of Rage 4's characters in many ways. Now, Streets of Rage 3 characters are the speedsters of the retro bunch. They make for some very aggressive playing, and I particularly love playing as Shiva and Axel. They're beasts. The Story Mode The Story Mode lasts for about an hour and a half, and it follows the game's 12 stages in a linear fashion, with the ability to quit at any time and return later. Now, this is perfect if, for example, you have to go over to your neighbor's driveway and do backflips while shouting their names. Up to three different saves can be made, so you can, for example, keep a save where you're practicing at a higher difficulty and have another one where you're able to return home with at least some of your teeth and part of your guts, so you can at least kinda have dinner, you know? Eating is important! It's also worth mentioning that every stage has a little cutscene which, while not necessary, certainly adds up to the atmosphere and feel of the game. After a few rounds, you probably won't be watching them anymore, but they show that the developers really did their best to deliver a game as good as they possibly could, and I value that. Stage Select Well, this mode is pretty much self-explanatory. It allows you to pick any stage you want. This is good if, for example, you're looking to practice a particularly difficult section for an arcade run on a higher difficulty. Arcade mode. Now this is where the real test of excellence lies. You get no continues and must beat the game in one sitting. If you really feel like testing your skills, this is the mode for you. Try going at it alone with different characters and see how far you can get with them. It's a nice way to practice and man, it's a lot of fun. Boss Rush. In this mode, you're put into an arena where you face every single boss back to back. You get a few health power-ups in between fights, but stay on your toes. One screw-up can mean failure. Not only is this challenging, but it's also a very good way to practice strategies and learn patterns. I play this mode a lot. Arena Like in previous Streets of Rage games, this mode enables you and another lunatic to beat the shit out of each other. I'll be honest, this isn't really my type of thing, but hey, that's just me. I played a couple of rounds to get footage for the video and it worked pretty well. The gameplay. This will always be the quintessential aspect of any action game. Good graphics and soundtrack mean nothing if the controls are not spot on. How does Streets of Rage 4 fare in this department? Well, my friends, it fares brilliantly. Double tapping, jump attacks, canceling, back attacks, wall bounces, ground bounces, combos. Streets of Rage 4 checks all those boxes with mastery. You rarely find yourself getting screwed by the controls. I never did, and I played this game a lot. The special attacks are pretty much just as they were in Streets of Rage 2 and 3. If you press the special attack button by itself, you get a more defensive and area clearing move. Now tap forward and special and you pull a more aggressive type of attack. However, on Streets of Rage 4, you get to do aerial special attacks and believe me, they're more useful than you think. Whether for escaping a tight spot, clearing mobs or comboing down in thugs, they're all very useful. However, the developers added a really nice touch to Streets of Rage 4. Special moves, both offensive and defensive, don't drain your health right away. Upon use, you'll notice that a portion of your health bar will turn green. Now, if you deal enough damage to your enemies, you'll be able to totally regain the health used to perform your special moves. This is a huge game changer in terms of offense, defense and combos. But don't get too trigger happy with them though. If you're hit before you finish restoring the green section of your health bar, whatever wasn't restored will be lost. Combos. 
The developers learned a lot from fighting games. You beat the living shit out of the tug and slammed him on the ground. You kicked poor Galcia at a wall and probably broke his back in the process? Well, sucks to be them, because you can keep your combo going with smart use of wall bounces, ground bounces, special attacks and star moves. If you pay a little bit of attention, you surely discover a few combos on your own easily. And if you want to get serious about it, there's plenty of great videos out there showing advanced ways of demolishing mob with style. Co-op. Now, this is one of the main points that contributes to Streets of Rage 4's longevity. Back in the 16-bit days, the only way for you to play beat-em-up with someone else would be to have them physically join you, but fortunately, nowadays, online game has pretty much become commonplace. I've lost track of how many hours I've already invested in this game's online mode and, quite frankly, I've still got a long way to go. It's always fun to hop into someone else's game after a hard day's work to relieve some stress beating virtual thugs for an hour or seven. However, if you do have the numbers, a total of four people can play this game in co-op locally. Ever felt like gathering your mom, dad, grandma and fighting crime? Well, don't let me keep you. And for God's sake, turn off that fucking friendly fire. It's annoying. Difficulty. Streets of Rage 4 welcomes all types of players. If you're new to the genre or gaming in general, go for easy mode. It's much more forgiving when you make mistakes. Normal mode offers a decent balance between breathing room and challenges. Now, if you're a veteran to the series or the genre, then I really recommend playing on hard and honing your skills to play on hardest. The final difficulty level, Mania, like the in-game description states, is not even remotely fair. However, even if you can't or have no interest in beating it, I recommend going a few rounds on it every now and then as a means of training. The bosses. It's easy to see that they were created to be as distinct as possible. And not only in terms of looks, but also in terms of approach. The coolest thing about the bosses is that, if you put in the time, they're all learnable. Now, I'm not saying you won't get punched in the face every now and then, even when you get really good at the game. What I am saying is that the boss fights are not a matter of dumb luck alone, mindless button mashing or one big damage race. If you pay attention and take your time to learn patterns and tells, you'll stand a very good chance, even at higher difficulties. The Graphics Streets of Rage 4 also presents itself very well on the visual side. It has big and detailed sprites, colorful scenarios, nice overlays you can turn on and off, and if you pay attention, you'll find some pretty cool easter eggs too. Pay attention to the sewer level, let me know what you find. Now, according to the developers, every character has over 1000 animation frames, and they were executed very elegantly. You still get that visual feel of old-school beat-em-ups, but with a whole more frames to spice it up. You get a very satisfying feel of force of impact when attacking. Try Adam's special attack and you see what I'm talking about. The soundtrack. Now listen, you can't possibly talk about Streets of Rage without mentioning the soundtrack. That'd be like talking about Ubisoft without talking about half-baked games. You just can't. Now, how does Streets of Rage 4 do in this apartment? The soundtrack captures the atmosphere of the game very well, with the added bonus of having the original composer and a personal favorite of mine, Yuzo Koshiro, join the fray and also Yoko Shimomura, who needs no introduction. However, if you don't know her, go listen to Parasite Eve 1 soundtrack. You'll be amazed. There's also a nice little addition. You can switch to Streets of Rage 2's original soundtrack at any time and, quite frankly, they still fit the bill perfectly. This and many other things help show how much the developers cared about this project. That's really nice. Closing thoughts. After all has been said and done, did Streets of Rage 4 live up to its legacy? Hell yeah, it did. I both congratulate and thank the developers for bringing such a great franchise to the modern times, 
They sure did their homework and treated this project with a lot of respect. From cutscenes to animation frames, backgrounds, bosses and gameplay, you can see attention to detail everywhere. Now you heard me mention practicing quite a few times during this video, and that's because the game is so well built that it just makes you want to keep on improving. It certainly makes room for you to do so. Streets of Rage 4 elegantly rose the bar for whatever beat-em-up games we may have in the future. This is a beat-em-up game that was crafted with quality, and it has plenty of reasons for you to keep coming back again and again. I know I do. And I really, really, really hope you guys had a good time watching this, because I surely had a great time making this. So that's it for today, and if you haven't already, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. There's more goodness on the way. See you next round.